visa, you go you, with your family, you live there seven years, you agree not to take any federal, state, or city subsidies, and you figure out how to live, how to create a business, how to get a job, how to buy a house, fix it up, how to make the school system better, and if you survive seven years, we'll give you full-time citizenship. It's the, it is the right solution. In fact, I think it's the only solution I've ever thought of that will solve the problem of these old line industrial cities. And if you don't do that, they're gonna continue to fall apart. Every building is falling apart. There's nobody on the roads. The school systems get worse. Crime keeps going up. We've got to do something in this country to turn that around. And if anybody's got a better idea, I'd love to hear it. But it's the one thing I know would work, and it certainly worked in New York. And it works in New York in lots of different neighborhoods. You can see it's the immigrants that go to these different neighborhoods. They're the ones that are turning them around. And then everybody else. Today, every American kid getting out of college wants to live in Williamsburg. Um, you know, why in Williamsburg? I don't know, but it, the groups before it, immigrant groups came and they, they built it and, and now, now we're going right after them. Yes, I, I think this is a very good example again of one size does not fit all, right? Uh, some minutes ago we spoke about how it was important to distinguish between the kind of immigrants that you want to promote you know, and that that could be part of a sensible policy. And again, also the destination, uh, maybe not even by state, maybe even by city, uh, it could be. Uh, why would central policy from Washington be good for all the cities for this huge country that is America? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things that can be done to the sensible common sense uh, measure. Danny, uh, is a smaller country the UK? Is there is there talk of regional regionalizing the the, the policy like this? No, I don't, I don't think we face that uh, that challenge really because of size. But I, I was actually going to ask a, a question. But that, don't you think that, for example, London is, is is a case by itself? I mean, somebody thinking of going to London, it's just that the, the, the prices of things there have to be completely different from other places in the UK. You know? Oh, that I completely agree with, that I completely agree with. But I think, you know, when it comes to the, the individuals that you're attracting, um, you know, they're probably making that choice before they actually arrive in the country. Uh, and the reality is that, you know, north to south, it's, it's a drive of a few hours. So I, 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 just, I just feel that um, it's, it's easier to manage from a strategic point of view because you can, you, you're just dealing with a, with a smaller size. But I completely buy the argument that, you know, an entrepreneur in London um, and an advanced engineering uh, employee in the north of England or whatever it might be are you know, very different propositions and very different environments. But I was just going to ask a question back actually um, around what's stopping a lot of this happening in, in the US. So you know, we've spoken quite a lot about um, you know, maybe, maybe it's well, we've spoken about the sort of political gridlock around immigration. Um, but my question is whether it's, it's that or it's also a political gridlock that reflects where voters are right now um, or what people are thinking in the country. And I'm, I'm conscious that here we are, we're in New York, um, we have um, a quasi-international audience, uh, we have a very different environment to the conversation that is taking place elsewhere in the country. And I just wondered how much is down to DC and how much is down to overall perceptions in the country that need to be addressed. In the end, uh, government's job is to lead, the executive's job is to have a vision and to get people to come along. Um, if you allow people to, if, if people don't have a leader, then they sort of gravitate towards the uh, conventional and the conservative, don't change anything, and they start <coughs> believing that everything that they don't have is the fault of somebody else. And I keep saying we're blaming China for everything. China's not perfect, but China is the market for America when we bring back the industries we want to have here. Uh, they're not the enemy, they're a competitor, but just because they're a competitor doesn't mean they can't be a customer as well. And to not have great relations with the other superpower in the world is pretty stupid if you think about it. But I think in the end, it probably all comes down to leadership. You have to have, at every level of government, somebody that has a vision, somebody that believes, and then you convince people, and then the legislature, you cajole, you trade, you, the normal ways you manage a legislature to, to go along. Um, it's very difficult in an election year. It's very difficult where the, it's hard to get the message out and the press, that we become such an instant news uh, consumer that it's very difficult to explain something complex in a soundbite. 
and our news, or the fourth estate is going more and more towards soundbite news. Uh, and the bloggers make it worse because there's no editing and no, you know, and the reporters today tend to be a lot younger. The economics of the business don't support uh, reporters with real experience. And so there's nobody to explain to the public. But that's just another challenge for government. Uh, just a few minutes left, I wanted to um, share quickly the recommendations that this new report makes in terms of uh, common sense reforms that uh, they're arguing ought to be able to get bipartisan support just to get uh, folks' reaction. The, the first, in terms of dealing with all this, is stop sending talented foreign, st foreign, foreign students with science and technology degrees home, but make it possible for them to, uh, to stay and help build uh, businesses here. Second, award more green cards based on economic needs. Again, only about 15% of the U.S. green cards based on employment, and only half of those are the actual employees. The rest are uh, spouses and family, and other nations give many more based on, a uh, much higher percentage based on that. The third is a new kind of uh, foreign entrepreneur visa, so the folks can build firms in the U.S. A fourth is to let American companies hire the highly educated workers they need where they need them, and not to have the kind of capped like the uh, H-1B visas are, which are capped at a much lower level than uh, the actual need is. Fifth is to give seasonal and labor-intensive industries access to foreign workers when they can't fill the jobs with Americans, something we know is a pressing issue. And then sixth, allow local governments to recruit more immigrants to meet regional needs along the lines we just talked about. Just quickly, let me go down the line, starting with you, Mayor. Is that the right kind of package, directionally, for where you think the country needs to go on this? Yes. Uh, we have to go and understand that we live in a global world. Communications, transportation, natural resources are going to flow across borders. And if we don't allow them to come here, they're, they're going to go elsewhere. Ricardo? Uh... Yes. Um, I think the first thing is, of course, to start talking about these things. So we get clear that the what, what is needed is to accept that immigration is something good for the economy, for the people. And then these discussions about how to proceed, I mean, there's lots of room for negotiation and, and adaptation about the how. But first we need to deal about the what, and, and I think just talking about it is a huge, big step. Danny, I'm not asking you to make public policy in the U.S., I know that would be awkward. It would be very awkward, um, but uh, I, you know I, I agree with those um, findings, and I think, to me, uh, in a way, there's four things. You know, one is to listen, uh, and I think that's important. Whether it's listening to stakeholders in the business community, academia, whatever it might be, it's, it's very important to listen. The second one is to actually have a strategy, uh, which uh, clearly is uh, is critical. The third one for me is having flexibility around, you know, once you, you, you go on that path, but the country changes and things happen and you're able to to uh, to be flexible. Um, and the fourth one, and for me, the most important, which I think is reflected very much in, in the report, is to remember that immigration policy has a completely direct link to jobs and growth. Um, and for me, those four are you know, reflected in, in those which I can be doing. So we've just got uh, literally two minutes left. I want to go down the line.